Okay, so let me find this because that's what we're going to need in a minute. And so I want you to take a seat, please. So come onto your mat, find somewhere comfortable, find somehow comfortable. And just do this one. Okay, so we're gonna do some of my favorite poses tonight in our, in our yin practice. Um, primarily focusing on the hips. And because these, when we do some deep hip stretches, and this is sort of a part one, if you like, part, this is part one of a two-part class. Part two we will, we will uh, work on on Sunday. So, um, and the theme for today's class is uh, something called Santosha. So we, we talked about, um, what about not grasping not holding on to and that was that's one of the yamas this is one of the knee yamas so knee yama is um the, the the things that we hold on to within ourselves okay the yamas are how we live our life in the community or in our homes the way we carry ourselves in society and the knee yamas are the, the, the way in which we kind of, con not control, but govern our minds and, and our kind of internal reaction to things. And santosha is a word that you are probably very familiar with because it's used a, a lot in day-to-day in -day speak, or at least it, it seems to be, maybe my world is a little bit skewed, but it basically means contentment. And, and we've just had a day of finding out or an evening, if you like, of finding out that we're going to be isolating from our families, from our friends for another three weeks. And this is a big thing, isn't it? We've just done three weeks. We know what three weeks feels like. We, and now we've got to go through that again. And that's a hard thing. I mean, I haven't personally even talked to my kids about it yet I just thought you know what I'll wait until they're not tired at the end of the day to announce that they're not going to be able to see their friends and family for a bit longer and so I thought that Santosha would be a quite a nice um, quite a nice uh, theme if you like for tonight's practice because we need to stay within this sense that we can remain not necessarily oh, this is all brilliant, this is all great, but just content with what with where we're at, okay? With that same not grasping onto stuff that doesn't hold us, doesn't serve us well, okay? So just sit comfortably, have your hands in your lap or onto your knees. You could take thumb and index finger together and your hands down, which is chin mudra. And when your hands are down, you're, you're sort of more containing your own energy into your own, uh, if you like, aura, your own space. So maybe have your thumb and finger together, but palms downwards and close your eyes. And just take some settled, gentle breaths for a moment or two. And so this contentment, this feeling of santosha is being content with whatever life is presenting us with at this moment okay so it's not worrying about the past it's not worrying about the future but it's staying within the here and the now and can we contain our, our expectations our desires our thoughts and just stay present and that's what we do in yin all of the time we we push ourselves, if you like, to an edge, an edge of, of where, you know, where the pose is strong, but not too strong. And then we stay there and we find the santosha within the pose. So that's what we're going to explore tonight and why we're going to do some big hip stretches later. So I want you to keep your eyes closed. Keep your breath moving in and out. And the mantra that goes with, with being content is shanti. And shanti means peace. And often you may go to yoga class and hear or, or take part in the chant of Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And so I want you to stay with that inside your own space tonight, okay? 
And so when the pose is tough, you're maybe going to go back to the just the word Shanti, or you can take it, you can repeat it three times. Just say it to yourself in your head and just remind yourself that to stay peaceful, to stay content, to stay present in the here and now. And we're just going to take another couple of breaths, connecting to the sit bones, into the earth, allowing the rest of the spine to feel light and lifted, shoulders back and down, face soft. And even with your eyes closed and your breathing settled, I'd like you to just gently pick up the corners of your mouth. So you're just taking your, yourself, your face into a little smile. And just stay with that space, stay in this positive vibe. And maybe just remember how fortunate we all are. Okay, so one more breath in and out. And then dropping slowly your chin towards your chest, just gently letting it fall forwards. Just letting it hang there for a minute as you put a bit of length into the back of the neck. Allow the shoulders to feel heavy too. Okay. And then when you're ready, you're going to inhale and gently lift your head back up. Okay. So first pose of the night is quite nice, quite straightforward, and one you're going to enjoy. So I'd like you to either grab um, a couple of uh, or a brick, so a brick would be fine. If you've got two, you could explore two. If you've got a bolster, you could use your bolster. And you're, all you're gonna do is you're going to lay down and I want you to prop up the back of your hips. So it's not complicated and I don't mind what goes here to prop you up. So it could be a rolled up blanket, towel, it could be a couple of cushions, it's whatever you've got, but something fairly firm that's gonna take your body weight and create a gentle arch. And this is all you're gonna do. So you're gonna start off with this uh, very fairly mild stretch to the front of the hip flexors, maybe a little bit in the quads, maybe not much, maybe a little bit in the abdomen, so just take care if you've eaten very recently. And if you can, you're gonna take your arms um, alongside your ears. If, however, this creates tingling, pins and needles, something of that nature, then you could experiment with having your arms wider, out wide to the sides a little bit more. But if that doesn't relieve the problem, then you're going to bring the hands or the arms back down, just rest them somewhere along by your sides. Okay, you could put your eye pillow on here. And sometimes it's quite nice to... You know, you could put the, the, I've got my block going across my body, so make sure that that's the, where it is. And make sure it's on your sacrum, please, not your vertebrae. You don't want it on the vertebrae of your lower back, and you don't want it on your tailbone. But do experiment with height. So if you are a little bit more flexible, you find it, you want a bit more of a deeper stretch, then you'll need to go higher up. Okay, but remember, first pose, so you don't need to push yourself too far. Remember that whole lovely, the loveliness of playing with your edges and making sure that you are working at a depth that is appropriate, that is safe, and one that allows you then, once you come into the pose, it allows you to be still. So find yourself settling in. And then we will start by focusing on the breath. And we'll take a little of the, um, maybe just to withdraw into the senses slightly, we're going to take the Vipassana uh, kind of style of meditation, where you are just aware of the breath 
um, around the very edges of your nostrils. So as you breathe in, you keep your awareness at your nostrils and feel the breath moving gently in through into the nose, through the nostrils, into the body. And as you breathe out, again, you're sensing, you're aware of the feel of your breath and of the sensation maybe as the breath passes over the, the upper lip. And that's going to be your focus for the next minute or so. So don't, don't, don't worry if your mind wanders, but just see if you can stay focused for a few breaths at a time and then increase those few breaths so it gets a little bit longer each time. So keep breathing. And this is part of what you are, if you, as you begin to work through the limbs of yoga, once we've worked a little bit on, uh, you know, you've gone through the yamas and the niyamas, as referred to already, that's number one, two. Then it's asana and pranayama. So that's three and four. And then it's concentration and it's then sense withdrawal. And this is what you're doing now by just your inner pose, but you are concentrating on one thing. I know that it's the sense of your breath and the feeling of your breath. You're becoming less aware of other uh, sensory reminders and that is because I want you to be in the pose, but I don't want you to spend the whole time thinking, oh, my hips are really getting a big stretch here. Oh, I don't know whether I like this, oh, my back, or, you know, those sorts of things. That's what you have to spend the first, you know, moments of the pose getting right so that you can be in the pose without having them nagging away at your awareness. Obviously, there's a bit of a balance here. There's a fine line. And quite often when we're in these yin poses, especially the next few that are about to come, um, you might find that they are becoming a bit more juicy. They are becoming a bit more intense. And it's harder then to concentrate on your breath. So we do it now. We do it while we're here in maybe a more gentle position. And then we work at exploring it in a little bit more depth when the pose gets more challenging, because that's about life, isn't it? Life throws us curved balls all of the time. We've had another one today. And, you know, it's, it's about how we react to it. It, we, it can make us feel miserable. And maybe it will be nice to wallow in a little bit of, of pity for, for a while. But ultimately, it's about how we react to it in the long term. And, um, and our yoga practice is going to help just to keep us on a steady, even keel. Because the wonderful thing about it is that it brings us home. Yoga makes us come home to ourselves, where we accept things, we accept our moods, we accept our, our ways of doing things. We accept our choices in life, whether they've been good choices or silly choices. It's all part of the wonderful tapestry of our lives, of our existences. Okay. Now it might be time just to think about bending the knees and bringing the arms back down by your sides.
okay and then either you're going to roll off to the side or you're going to maybe take the block out from underneath you and see whether you can get yourself into just lying down on the floor and just letting your back settle for the moment good lovely okay so just think about your sacrum just as we did on after class maybe on tuesday if you were here for that and we put our legs up onto the seat of the chair there's that lovely anchoring that happens when the, the back of the body can rest so deeply into the ground okay so we're going to go with this a little bit further now and what i want you to do is if you've got a bolster use that if you're using blocks or other supports you're going to stick with this and we're going to change our leg position into the butterfly so that's the soles of the feet together the knees out wide but we're going to vary it up slightly by putting maybe a brick or a bolster underneath the back of your body so you are already into a slight um, inversion and then the soles of the feet are going to come together and the knees are going to open out wide now i quite I quite like doing this, this feels quite nice, but if it doesn't feel great for you, then you just take the brick or the bolster out and do your reclining butterfly in the way that we have practiced it already in previous classes, and most of you are familiar with that. A couple of other watch points here are these. Sometimes it is quite nice to be in the pose, I'll just grab my bolster, it's far too far away. So, um, to be here with maybe the brick underneath you, maybe the feet together, the knees out wide, and then maybe something heavy like your bolster resting here. And it's that little bit of extra weight onto the thighs. You could use sandbags if you have them. I'm not sure any of you have got sandbags to be honest, but you might do. And you can bring the arms back up over the head again and just sit in this position uh, a final option or options if you feel very vulnerable with the knees out wide and you've got something that could support you maybe a strap looped around the knees in a figure of eight um, that can cradle your knees uh, maybe a couple of big cushions i know that's you know you probably don't want to get back up again but a couple of cushions underneath the sides of your legs is also a nice option but we're just getting into this sense that we can open across the front of the groins and release the knees and let the arms come up over your head close your eyes maybe put your eye pillow on and just enjoy okay because we we when we exercise we we tend to kind of and when we and just carrying ourselves especially when we're feeling a bit tense we've got a little bit of worry going on we kind of hold our abdomen sometimes you know i talk to people and they say yeah, i'm really forgetting to breathe at the moment and sometimes they cap you can catch yourself and go oh yeah breathe yeah <laughs> and so what this is teaching us is that we need to just open up the front of the body and in doing so we can feel a little bit vulnerable a little bit open so it's quite nice if that's happening for you to maybe cover yourself with your blanket or put something over the over the chest over the upper body so that you feel a little bit like you're being protected or a little bit like you've got some some sort of covering so just stay here remember that you're going to be here now for about three Three or four minutes so hopefully you've done all your fidgeting you've found your nice comfortable edge where it is maybe that borderline between being too intense and as my yoga teacher my yin yoga teacher says to me you or says to us we just now marinade okay so that's what i want you to do and maybe go back to your breathing and if you'd like to try something different this time, then you're going to breathe in for a steady count of four. 
and breathe out for a steady count of four. So slow breaths. Make it so that you're not fighting your breath. Please don't make the breaths too long or too short. So you can adjust the number if you need to. And encourage a natural pause in between the inhalation and especially at the end of the exhalation. Because that natural pause that occurs there is really our body's ultimate opportunity for stillness. Maybe just notice over time whether your body starts to give in to any resistance. You're not looking for anything major to happen, just very subtle differences. And this will be the essence of the true yin practice. So I'm going to stay here for one more minute. If you are ready to come out of the pose sooner than that, then please just come to lie down. Maybe with your, uh, take the supports out and just lie with your knees bent. So you're going to take one more breath here. As you exhale, maybe begin to float the arms back down by your sides. Take off anything from that's resting maybe on your thighs and gently ease the knees back together so that you can lift up slightly. And it might be difficult to do this, so just be very, very gentle with yourself. And then carefully place the back of your body down onto the mat and just be still because this is the this is the rebound. This is the interesting bit. So after you've been in and quite an intense shape, then we've got to let our body almost kind of uh, regain its composure afterwards. And if we move too quickly, then we can put the body into a bit of a spasm. So we have to move very, very slowly. And maybe now just start to gently let the knees rock from side to side. And just see how that feels across your lower back. Don't have to do anything that's too, too big, no movements that are very drastic. Just gently rock the knees from side to side.
Okay. All right, so we're gonna come over to one side with the knees and roll ourselves up to come and sit. Okay, so what I would say to you is that because I have, I'm recording this, when I record this, I record whatever is on my screen in front of me. So I suddenly thought about that and thought I'd better turn all of your thumbnails off. So given my te technological issues tonight, it, what that means is I can't see you. Um, so if you, if you need me, use the chat button at the bottom because that will flash. Um, so if you, need a, if you need a hand, do it that way. Okay, so we're going to come into a half saddle, which I know is everybody's delight. You might want a strap. That's very, very optional. But it's essentially a pose which is going to look like this. So I'm sitting on one heel, but because I don't want to sit on one heel for five minutes because I'll just lose the sensation in my leg, I'm going to put a brick underneath my right sit bone. So it's my right knee that I've got bent here. And I'm going to try to get my left heel out wide to the outside edge of my left hip so that I'm not sitting directly onto that heel. And in order to make that a bit easier, if you've got a tricky left knee, for instance, if this bent knee doesn't like this, then you could take your strap, or another option here, as some of you will know, is a rolled up face cloth, and you just wedge the strap right into the back of the knee joint. And then when you come to sit down with that bent knee, what it does is it just helps to keep the knee um, a little bit less compressed, a little bit more open. That's one option. The other option is to just get your thumb onto the back of the left calf. So I'm assuming that your left leg is the bent one. And just roll the calf out to the side so that when you sit, the calf has kind of moved out a little bit. So I've kind of got my left sitting bone hovering on the floor, or, or sorry, hovering off the floor. My right sitting bone is sitting on my block. So you're going to need to put something underneath you to keep the pelvis balanced. Some of you might need to have your bolster behind you or a series of cushions because eventually we're going to lie down. Now, what I'd like you to do is to come into this position and to put your hands on the floor behind you. And then you're going to pick your hips up and point to your tailbone in between where your knees would be. And then lay yourself back down. So you're just putting a little bit of space into the uh, lower back region. And then you're going to lean back. And it might be that you start to lean back onto your elbows and your lower back is, has got the support of the bolster beneath you. And you're just gonna lie back like this. So you've got quite a big, intense stretch happening on the front of the left thigh. You can keep your right knee bent for now, or you can straighten the right leg away. So in a half saddle. Now, if you can't do this for whatever reason, your option is to turn over, lie on your tummy and hold on to your left foot and pull your left foot in towards your, the heel towards your bottom just like like this so you're going to roll forwards be in this position and you're going to pull the left heel obviously this is much more active you're having to be much more upright you don't get to sort of luxuriate so much but it will definitely be kinder on your knee however don't use that as an option unless you have got difficulty in the knee joint please because i don't want you to miss out on the lovely intensity of this gorgeous pose and there's lots of variations which we can explore while we're here so find your easy some of you won't need the bolster underneath the back of your body so some of you will be able to lie down flat on the floor I always say to people, don't worry too much if the left knee lifts off of the floor. However, you should encourage or try to encourage the left knee to come downwards. So if it has risen right up, don't worry, you're going to get more of a stretch on the top of the foot. But do encourage the knee down. 
Now, some of you might be here thinking, oh, this is a bit too easy. I need something else to keep me occupied. And so you could have your strap nearby and you could start by bringing your right foot off of the floor and bending your knee. And then you could use your strap just around the front of the shin and use that to sort of pull the knee closer in towards you. Okay, so that's one option. And that creates a bigger, more intense stretch into the left uh, hip and front of the thigh. Or if you're finding that your left knee is really lifting off of the floor, then you could, like you're sitting cross-legged, just rest the uh, right foot on the, or ankle on the top of the left thigh with the knee opening out like it is, like mine is now, like a figure of, like a figure of four. So you've kind of got your knee out wide, similar to the butterfly of the previous pose. It's more difficult, I find, to kind of maintain a comfortable position. So for the, in the interest of yin and stillness, try to find a position that you can be still in. And we're probably only going to be here now for another couple of minutes. So if you can bear it for that much time more, then um, please, please do your best. But like I say, any kind of pain, any sharp shooting this, any pins and needles, then you must come out of the pose because your body is obviously not that happy to be there. Okay, so close your eyes if you can. And just settle into the breath. And that feeling of contentment, even though what you might be doing might be having another whole conversation with you, another chat might be going on, where your thigh or your, your knee or something is having a big firm, firm telling off with you. But if you can, stay with the breath and stay with the, with the mantra, the Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And if you keep repeating that with your breath and stay in that peaceful, content place, because you're only going to be here now for another minute, so you can do this. All right, lovely stuff, everyone. Well done. So we're going to think about releasing. There's obviously, you could pick yourself up, use your arms, try to stay fairly even if that's the way you're doing it. Releasing your foot if you're lying on your front. Some of you, however, will be able to bend the right leg to lift your hips up a little bit and just slide your left leg. And it might not feel very familiar. It might not feel much like your left leg. So just gently ease the leg away and let it regain if it's lost a little bit of sensation. Okay, just let it kind of move slowly. Maybe do some circles with your big toe down away from you as you... Yeah, just let the blood flow again. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do the other side. And they, you know that that's, uh, that was coming. So it's probably best to sit yourself up rather than try to come into it from a lying position. And then do the same thing. So just scoot your brick over to what will be your left sit bone. Your left knee will start off being bent like this. Lean forwards, wedge something into the back of the knee if you need it. Thumb onto the calf to pull the calf muscle out to the side so that you can sit back with it out of the way. Sitting with your left sit bone supported, books, whatever it is. And then lifting and pointing the tailbone in between the spaces where the knees would be, they were both there. And then eventually lying yourself down, maybe 
pulling the bolster right in so that it really does support your lower back if you feel that you've got quite a big arch going on there. Um, for this side, just take your time, find what's comfortable, have a little play with, with extra props. You could maybe hold the opposite elbows around the top of the head here, if this feels okay for your shoulders. Your left leg can be straight, long down the mat. And just hang out here in this position. You might find that it's much, much different on this side and you need a, a slightly different arrangement with your props. Okay, and so when we get here, when we find our, find our ease, we find our comfort, we're going to breathe and just take some deep breaths in and out. And we're going to maybe breathe in for four and out for six. So we're further working our body's reactions. And just reminding our bodies to stay in this calm and settled place because the lengthened exhalation will just teach that to the body. And we can learn a lot about ourselves from these sorts of yin practices. We can learn about the inner workings of our mind. Because when we're here, when we're in a position we might not really want to be in, how are you reacting to this internally? Is it to keep fidgeting so that you distract yourself from the, from the problem? Or maybe that little conversation that you're having between you and your knee or you and your thigh it's getting so loud, so forceful, that it's making you really close to coming out of the pose. Is it gonna win? Is it gonna dominate? Or maybe your mind chooses to hide. Maybe it chooses to run away, to, to, to try to forget the problem, try to ignore it. I wonder, what you're, wonder what's going on in your mind at the moment. you are involved then maybe just go back to the mantra Om Shanti 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 Okay, so five more breaths. Remember, if you want to come up sooner, please do so carefully.
Okay, so when you're ready, you're starting to release the right leg and letting it stretch out. <laughs> That's why we do it. That's, this is what we do this for. <laughs> and this sensation, this lovely openness in the body just stays with you. And when we work the body and we release the joints and the tension that we might be holding and we focus the mind, then it really does help our overall sense of well-being. Okay, so what I'm going to suggest is that if you have got yourself propped up as I am, so I don't know if you can see, you can see I'm lying on my bolster and it's along my spine, you could stay here and just bring the soles of your feet in for a normal butterfly just for two minutes. If you haven't got anything underneath your back or you don't have a bolster to lie on or you're in the alternative pose, then you could take a blanket, roll it up, take it across your mat and you want to lie on it roughly where bra strap level is and so that your chest is fairly open, your head is on the floor, maybe your arms are in a cactus, uh, bent elbows, Hopefully you can see that the is a little bit annoying. And the knees, the feet, soles of the feet together, the knees are out wide for, um, for a reclining butterfly. I'm just gonna stay here and just enjoy a few breaths here, not so long. So we've kind of been in this similar position now <coughs> for a little bit of a while. Okay, so take two more breaths. And then gently ease your knees together when you're ready. <clears throat> and roll off to the side so that you can lay on your side with your knees bent and your spine gently flexed. <coughs> Okay, so we're going to explore pigeon pose next. So come up to sit when you're ready. And I'm, there's so many ways of, of, of varying this that I'm going to just show you it in its, its sort of basic form so that you can then decide if you want to explore something else. Now, for some people and some people's knees, this isn't going to be your favourite pose. But, but there is always an alternative that I'll show you in a minute. So we're gonna do, for those of you that are coming into pigeon, you might want a bolster, you might need something that's that high, you might just need your rolled up blanket or a, or a brick uh, or, a, or one of the full blocks. Okay, so this is a full block rather than a, than a higher brick. So you're gonna be on all fours, and your right knee is uh, going to come to the back of your right wrist like this and then you're taking your foot across to the left hand side of the mat and you're looking to try to keep a sort of right angle to the ankle joint so don't point the toes away from the from the knee then with your left toes tucked under you're slowly going to walk your left leg out behind you and if your right 
sit bone doesn't come so if it if it has to roll down to the floor like this that's not okay so you need to keep the back of your pelvis level here and you need to put something underneath this sit bone you could start the pose by being upright and then eventually you could come down and you're going to come maybe onto your elbows first of all, or you can bring your head down as soon as you're ready. Some of you might like to, to lie with your arms stretched. So you're in this sort of a position. So the key points here are to keep the pelvis level and the ankle at a right angle. And if your knee is telling you otherwise, then one alternative <clears throat> is to come and lay on your back and to cross your right leg over the top of your left thigh. You're going to stay lying down, head down, but you might want to make the pose a little bit easier by taking your strap around your left thigh, so you're holding it like this, but you have got your uh, right leg crossed over the top and you are, you are pulling your left leg, your left thigh, closer towards you. And by doing that, you're going to get that similar stretch here into the glute region. The third alternative will be similar to the yin practice that we did the other day, which was all up against the wall. So you lay, put one foot on the wall, one leg crossed over, and just gently pressing that knee towards the wall and making sure that you are close enough to the wall so that you feel the, the, in, the stretch in the glutes. So like I say, there's, there's loads of ways of playing around with pigeon if you don't want the version of lying on your front. Okay, <clears throat> so this is another pose that is going to be potentially a big, <coughs> excuse me, a big kind of conversation happening within yourself. So I always find this is just for me personally with my practice and this pose that you have to work with your breath. You can't allow yourself to be caught up in the, in the physical sensations. You've got to stay in control. And as long as it's not painful, you are playing with that edge. You want it to be intense. This is going to be <clears throat> releasing some of the very strongest of the connective tissues in your body, the densest connective tissues. And they're there for a job. They're there to do the job of holding you upright and managing the extreme forces that run down the legs and up the legs. And by working these areas, remember how we've explored in previous weeks how we hold so much of our, our kind of emotional tension in our hips, our irritability, our resistance to change. <clears throat> So that's why it might be feeling a little bit more intense here than you would have expected it to. But it's okay. You work with the breath. So for me, for this pose, I would breathe in and breathe into the left, oh, sorry, the right thigh, wherever I'm feeling the most intense sensation. And I would fill it up with my breath, fill it up with light, fill it up with space. Create space with your inhalation. And then as you exhale, breathe out the tension. Let your body surrender to the pose. And by that, I mean <clears throat> become a little bit heavier. Sink a little bit closer to the floor. Let the earth hold you because she's got all of us. Just look at how quickly the earth, the environment, the wildlife, has changed in just these few short weeks in our small country. When we've started to change our habits and do things a little bit differently, and how interesting it is that it's so quick.
So maybe just a few more breaths here, maybe four or five if you can. <clears throat> And then for those of you that are ready to start coming out, you know, prop, lift yourself up back so that your hands are supporting you. Those of you that are on your back, you can roll to one side and come up to sit. Those of you that are facing downwards, you're going to tuck your toes under, walk your knee a little bit closer in, and then just start to lift yourself up into a downward dog. So your hands about shoulder width, and pressing back through the heels, lengthening out the legs, let the spine lengthen, let the head hang. Okay, and then we will float the knees back down onto the ground and come straight onto the other side, please. So left knee forwards, foot across towards the right. Try to keep a right angle shape to the ankle. Tuck right toes under, walk the right leg back nice and long as far back as it will go then untuck the toes if the left sit bone doesn't come to the floor put something underneath it maintain that sense of balance across the back of your pelvis your sacrum area and then you can stay upright you can walk your hands in you can lift your pigeon chest okay and then we will gently fold forwards as and when you're ready Remember, if you're on the other side, you're going to cross your left ankle over the top of your right thigh, and then you're pulling the right thigh closer in towards you to get that same stretch through the glute complex. Allowing yourself to rest, maybe close your eyes, let your head come down to rest. Just spend some time, first of all, settling, making sure that you've done your fidgeting, you're adjusting. Do whatever it is that you need to do so that you can be here, you can be present. And then do that same thing with the breath. Breathe in to the spaces that might be chatting really loudly at you. Breathe into that space. Create space with your breath. And then breathe out to release. Breathe out to become softer and heavier. Find the santosha within, the, within this individual pose, the contentment. The acceptance of where our body is at this moment in time, you know, not getting frustrated with an injury or a, or a, a health issue that maybe is preventing you from practicing as deeply as you would like, because we have to be content with where we're at right now. Let these big, strong yin poses help us to navigate our way through, through maybe times of, of difficulty or darkness. Perhaps here, as you breathe out, can you allow yourself to smile? Can the corners of your mouth turn up again as you did at the beginning?
So one more minute here, that's another six breaths. Okay, so remember to come out of it, similar to how you did for the previous side. So if you're in your full pigeon, you're going to walk the right toes in, slide the left foot back and lift yourself. So if everybody comes into a downward dog when you're ready, and just enjoy maybe pressing the heels down, lengthening out along the back of the legs. Letting the head hang, pressing both heels down to the ground, lifting the sit bones and feeling that extra length along the back of your body. And then we will float the knees down to the ground and untuck the toes, come into child's pose or you can lay on your back and hug your knees in towards your chest if you'd rather not be on your knees. Just pause here, take a breath or two. Okay. And then we are going to slowly lift ourselves up and come into a comfortable seat please. So if you want to go back to uh, kneeling, you could slip the bolster or the brick in between the, um, the ankles so that you've got something to elevate your hips or just come and sit cross-legged or in any other seated position that you enjoy. And we're going to finish the practice with just a few minutes of, of, of sitting just to draw it to a close, just to centre ourselves again. Um, and then I'll let you drift off and you can do your shavasana um, in bed maybe, <laughs> okay? Uh, so bring your fingertips to the floor next to you. Take a lovely big inhale and sweep the arms up and bring the palms together above your head. And then exhale down so that the hands rest in front of your heart. Maybe close your eyes here, relax your shoulders, be soft in the jaw and the cheekbones. Allow the skin across your forehead to, to release. And think about picking up the corners of your mouth. Just take a little bit of a smile. Remind yourself of this feeling of santosha Maybe you've, you've, att uh, you've attained it, you've, you've reached it here in your practice today, or you might have caught a glimpse of it. And that might be enough to sustain you. We keep returning to our practice. And we keep allowing our practice to nourish us and to serve us. We show up, we put the time in, we, we become present, and it repays us tenfold. Okay, so before we depart, we're going to share the chant of Om Shanti Shanti Shantihi together. If you want to just listen, you can, or just say it into your head. And so we're going to take a breath in now. So breathe in. Om Shanti 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 and then bow your chin towards your chest. Take a breath or two. And 
And then you can release your hands down into your lap again. And slowly flutter your eyelids open and lift your face. Well done, everybody. Super good tonight. Hope that lets you have a very restful um, sleep in just a second.